It is 10.30, and I think it is time for Little Shop of Physics Live to go live. And this week, we have a special program for you, and this one is Bouncing, Bending, and Twisting Light. And we're going to start with some introductions to things. And first, an introduction to twisting light. And that relates to a phenomenon called polarization. And then Maude and I are going to do a quick polarization demonstration here. Light is a wave. And light has a certain polarization. So Maude's going to, we have this little spring here, and I'm going to stand back like so. And if I shake a wave on this spring, it goes to Maude. But there's a little slit here. And if I shake the wave up and down, it goes right through the slit. But if I take the slit and I turn it sideways, and I shake the wave up and down, it doesn't, doesn't really make it through. I got a big wave going on on my side, but nothing on Maude's yeah. side. And if I do here, now my wave is making it through. And I, so this is one polarization of light. You say it's vertically polarized if it's waving up and down. If it's waving horizontally, that's horizontal polarization. It'll only go through if the slit works like this. So we're going to think about this. We've got a bunch of materials which look like it's a slit, and it only lets light through if it's waving in one particular direction. That's the thing we're doing with polarization. And I'm going to show you something that you do with it. And I've got this little demonstration on the table here. And you're saying, when do I use polarized light? When do I use polarization? Use it all the time. When you're working on screens, your screens work like this. So I've got a light pad, like so. Got a light pad. And let's see, and which video is spotlighted? There it is, awesome. And then I'm gonna take a polarizer and put it on top of it, like so. And then the light that comes through here is polarized. And it's polarized this way. The only light that gets through is stuff that's waving up and down, like so. And then I have little squares of plastic that I can put on here. And little squares of plastic are polarizers. And that one is polarized the right way, and so it appears light. But if I rotate it by 90 degrees, it's going to get dark. So I can put on different squares, and I can, and these are what happens with the pixels on your screen. I get light pixels, and I get dark pixels. And I'm going to turn this so you can see it. I got a light pixel, and got a dark pixel. And so you've got inside your screen, you've got a little sheet of polarizer, and then we can take those pixels and basically rotate them. And you do that electronically. You rotate it so it lets the light through or it doesn't let the light through. And you make the little spots on your screen appear light or make them appear dark. So if you need a source of polarized light, you have a source of polarized light already. You've got a screen. You've got a tablet. You've got a laptop. You've got a phone. The screen is going to have a polarizer built into it. And so Anything that we're trying today with polarizers, you can try with polarizers as well. Now, the other piece we're going to do at the start of this section is we're going to talk about bending light. or sorry, bouncing light. And the way we bounce light is with mirrors. So I have a mirror here. Patrick and Adam are over there. And I can see them because light from them comes towards me. But if I take this mirror and put it here, now we can see Patrick and Adam because I'm taking the light from them and I'm bouncing it toward the camera. So I just took light and I bounced it, bounced right off the mirror. So with polarization, we're twisting light, and with mirrors, we're bouncing light. And we're going to go back and forth and do a whole bunch of bouncing and twisting demonstrations. We're going to go bounce back and forth between Maude and Brenna. And we're going to start with Brenna, who's got like a flexible mirror. Brenna, show us what you got. I do. So I have the same type of mirror as Brian. You can see Patrick right there. There's it turns Patrick. out you can bounce lot light in different ways. So if I hold this mirror vertical, and then I bend it like this. Oh, and then turn it a little bit so we can see Patrick. I want yeah, to see short, stubby. There he is. Trying to locate him. <laughs> there he is. There, there he is. is. Right there. Right My there. My radar. You can see he's kind of short and stubby. Short and stubby Patrick. Short and stubby Patrick. But if I bend it this way. Whoa. And that was like short and stubby upside down Patrick. Patrick <laughs> is upside down. And he's short and stubby, but if he raises his arm up, it gets kind of long. What? That's awesome. awesome. And that's just a piece of flexible mirror that we got at the hardware store. Oh, my gosh. And there it is, right side up, Patrick. Upside down. Upside down, down Patrick. Patrick. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Well, we, <laughs> and then awesome. I did a video of this. And we have a video of this, right? Yep, and it's uh, pretty awesome. Awesome. Ooh. Concave and convex. And there's, like, Brenna 
little squished Brenna. I was dancing. Dancing. And, and there's upside I, down Brenna and yep. Emma. Oh, yeah. And the cool thing about this is when we put that um, concave mirror sideways, we actually flip sides. What? So you can see we're standing. It's me and then Emma. But in the mirror, it looks opposite. Well, it does. Which is kind of awesome. It switches you backwards. Yes, it oh, does. Yeah. And it's just... <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. <laughs> Thanks for putting that Love in. Love the dancing. <laughs> Love the dancing. It's a little science dance right there. So that's a little bit of bouncing light. And now we're going to do some twisting light. Let's twist again like we did last summer, baby. And we're over here to mod. That was the worst joke you've ever made. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. just teasing. And, and the bar is low. I'm just saying. All righty. Yeah. So here I've just got a regular old calculator. And I'm Let's just going to put some numbers on that calculator. Mom. Yeah, I'm going to go numbers on it. One, two, three. Is that? Oh, no, keep it going. I want, okay. I want oh, okay. We're going to go numbers. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. All right. And oh, a bunch of numbers. Funky. The top is a little gross, but it's fine. Let's squeeze it and let's see if we can get our connection back. So we're getting our calculator. That's close enough. We got numbers on the calculator. Some sort of alien language. That's OK. But I'm going to do a little magic trick and I'm going to take this little film. Oh my gosh, and then the, all the numbers went away. And we just did surgery on that calculator and took off the polarizer. And then you don't see the pixels anymore. That is awesome. That is awesome. And that's how calculators work. And we just took a calculator that we didn't need anymore and we did some surgery on it. And we'll show you other things that work that way. But now we're going to do more bouncing. We're going to bounce back over to Brenna. And we've got something. What is going on here? You've got a laser and you've got a piece of plastic? Yes. Yeah, so I have this fiber optic plastic rod. And what these do is they make sure that no light escapes from the rod. So if I shine this super bright laser through, you can see. Oh, wow. It doesn't come out the side. It's just it like bouncing around inside. Yep. yep. Whoa! Oh, Whoa. we're going to keep moving it back and forth like that. That is amazing. Look at that. You can see it bouncing off the sides of the rod. It and curves. And you can see on the end, the light does not come out until the end Whoa, of the rod. Whoa, until so the end. Very awesome. little scattering that is happening in this rod. As a matter of fact, that's how this show is getting to people over yes. the internet. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> you can also do something pretty similar in water. So here I have my jug of water. And I have my little container to catch the water. I'm going to unscrew this if I can. And then I have a laser here that I'm going to line up. And I'm going to line it up to where it shoots through the hole that we have created. So let me see if I can get it. I have to put my thing back a little farther. Let's see. It's kind of hard to do on the... My clip popped off. Let's see here. All right, there we go, there we go. So now if I pull this cork out and I put my finger here. Whoa, the laser is following the water yes, stream. Yes, the light is bending with the water. Um, it's just bouncing around just like we saw in the tube. Oh my gosh. So it comes out the end, which oh is kind gosh. of awesome. That is amazing. So you made a light pipe out of water, I which did. is dramatic and cool. That is super awesome. And now we're going to twist back over to Maud and we're going <laughs> to do another polarization demonstration. And she's using her laptop screen as her polarized light source, right? Yep. And you just want to, like I did, I just have a whiteboard app, but you can just use any mostly white surface works well enough for that. And so I'm going to have I have a bunch of a few different materials here and they're all just made of plastic and this funny thing about plastic is that when it's manufactured you're putting different stresses on the plastic and so here you can see my little plastic tube is normal but because of the manufacturing stress it twists light in different um, areas so if I twist it nothing but there you go. You can see a little and bit Mark, of... Could you tip your screen up a little bit yeah. so it's more towards Patrick? Excellent. And then you're going to take that piece of plastic, put it in front... Oh, oh my go. gosh. And look, as you twist it, you are putting stresses, and the stresses change the polarization of the light. 
and we see amazing colors in there. That is, oh my gosh, that is delightful. And if kids wanted to try this, you use your laptop screen as your light source. Oh. Where are they going to get a polarizer? Where's a cheap place I could get a polarizer? And these little things, I can't quite put them on my face at the moment, but... Polarized sunglasses. Polarized sunglasses are a really easy place to get something like this. So I need plastic, and I need a polarized light screen, which is just my laptop, and I need polarized sunglasses. Yeah. That is awesome. And, we're, and we have a couple of other plastic We've got bits, a right? couple other things, yeah. So I know no one, not a lot of people are just going to have random tubing Am at I home. Am I going to tip the screen up towards plastic, Patrick, if you would? A little bit more, if you would? Okay, and then Patrick is going to put the polarizer in front of his lens, Whoa. of his camera. Oh my gosh. So there's something cool with just some plastic wrap. And then hold it nice and still so we can get a good image on that. That is awesome. And then if you rotate it, what does it look like? Oh my gosh, and that's just stretched plastic wrap. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. That, and then we found this uh, little plastic spoon. Oh my gosh, yeah. look at the colors. And those are all stresses that were baked into the plastic as part of the manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. And if Patrick takes away the polarizer, let's see what happens to the colors. Nothing! Gone. And then the polarizer comes back in. And let's see the colors reappear. There are our colors back again. Yep. And so this is all about twisting light. Awesome. Yeah. And I think we're going to jump that's, over yeah. to Brenna. We're going to bounce back to Brenna because Brenna's got a little... I let's do. Let's see. We're doing the wormhole next, right? The wormhole? Aren't we? Oh, yep, you are right, Brian. You are right. I'm not, it doesn't happen often. So let's, <laughs> let's, let's give it to me. Okay, this so time Brenna, I'll give it to you. You've got a special kind of mirror, right? Yes, I do. So I have a mirror that is semi-translucent, so I can see through it, right? And I made this contraption here just by taking a mirror, cutting it. It's a plastic mirror. Oh, and we and can then, see Patrick in the mirror. Yep, awesome. Placing it inside this frame. And then I taped lights all the way around the outside, okay? And when I put this semi-transparent mirror on the top, and I turn on some lights, and I'll try to get it to where it switches to all different colors, because it's pretty awesome. Let's see, should be getting there soon. Hold on, there we go. Okay, and then tip it up towards Patrick so we can See that tunnel of light. You can oh my see gosh. there is this tunnel. And let me see. Hold on. It has like a bajillion settings, but the green is pretty good. What you can see is the light from the lights is reflecting on one surface and bouncing back, reflecting off the other. So this, these two mirrors together kind of gives this illusion that I have this sort of endless wormhole as we would cause it. Yeah, it's like there's a Call wormhole in Patrick's belly, which I've yes. always suspected to be true, actually. <laughs> I think that's what gives him his special powers. Mm, awesome. Kind of awesome. And then we're going to twist back over to Maude, who is going to show us how to make art with polarization. We're getting, um, this is steam here. Yep. Getting steamy. Awesome. So let's see what we got. All right. So here I've got just that same laptop screen, and I've just got a um, picture frame with some glass right here and just shining this through my laptop screen you don't see anything even in the polarized um, even with the polarizer on it you can't really see anything but I'm going to add some tape which is if you want to think about it it's just gonna be like an extra obstacle for the light to twist around so it has to move and We're you can't see anything there uh, there we see nothing but when Patrick brings in the polarizer let's see what we see what Whoa. there's the tape you made it appear. Yep, and I can make different colors with how many layers of tape I put in. So if I add another layer there on top oh of gosh. it, created another light square there. And you're making art with tape and oh, basically polarized yeah. sunglasses. That is awesome. That is awesome. And you may, you have a finished product. I have some. I have with, two you? finished products here. So I've got one thing that just looks like a little grid, but when I place it over. Whoa. Whoa. Looks like a kaleidoscope. Yeah. Pretty. It is like a kaleidoscope. And it's just tape. That was a lot of tape right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then took the liberty of making this pretty little butterfly here. It just looks plain to me, Maude. Well, if we put the polarizer what? on it, we see that half of it. Wow. 
has like little scales and pretty colors. Oh my gosh. And the amazing thing is some insects actually use cholesterol crystals to do something like that. Some of the bright colors that you see in insects actually occur this way, which is kind of amazing. Huh. Wow, Maude, thank you for that. Yeah. And then over to Brenna, and this, now we're ready for a phantom light bulb. Yes, we are. So I can make an image with a mirror and a light bulb, and the image is not where the light bulb seems what? to be. So here I have my contraption. This is called the phantom light bulb. That light bulb's right in that little socket, right? Oh, yeah, you think it is. But if I do this... What? It is not there. This is a convex mirror. And what it does is it flips the image. So the light bulb is actually under here in this part. And we have a pretty cool video to illustrate this. Let's see this trickery. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's not trickery, it's physics. It's physics. Come on, Maude. Trickery. <laughs> oh, yeah, and there's our phantom light bulb, and that light bulb looks like it's in that socket for sure. But it is not. It, it is, is not. underneath. Whoa. It's kind of awesome. There we go. See, it's under there, and it looks like it's on the top. Oh, my gosh. Kind of and awesome. so the mirror bounced the light, and since it was a bent mirror, it makes this image, which is up top, and that's a kind of image we call a real image. Yep. That was awesome. Yep. And now, another twist back to Maude, and Maude is going to show us this picture frame, but I don't see a picture in that digital picture frame. Well, you know, I, Brenna's making images over there, and I thought I might join in in the fun here, and I have this high-tech picture um, frame where you just upload. And then, so here what we did, we also did surgery on this, just kind of like what we did with the calculator, took out one of the lenses. So when I slide this Whoa. polarized frame over it. That's a picture of the Little Shop of Physics in action. Oh, yeah. Look like ghosts. So we just like surgically altered the picture frame to take off that polarizer. And how about if you rotate it by 90 degrees? How does it, how does it look? Whoa, Ooh, you get like whoa. a negative now it's like image. X-ray image of everybody. That <laughs> is, that is awesome. That is an little, awesome. A little awesome frightening, thing. but it's okay. <laughs> that is phenomenal. And we just did that with a picture frame. Got that at a garage sale for about five bucks, and peeled the polarizer off the front. Um, it's kind of an awesome, awesome thing. And one more bouncing light. And this is bouncing light. I don't see any mirrors going on there, Brent. I no, see a fish we can, tank and we a can, container. We can make our own. So what? Sometimes we get this thing called total internal reflection where no light can get out, it just reflects. So if I put in this beautiful little picture of Franklin, there's air inside this container, and when I twist it, Whoa. I, it disappears. I, it disappears. I see not, I not, I'm seeing a reflection of stuff that's on the other side of the fish tank. Yep, and it's just because there are different indices of refraction. So water bends light by a certain amount, and so does air. When you come in at a certain angle, that light can't get out, so it just reflects off, makes this mirror. Awesome, we got a video of that, right? I think so. I think we do, awesome. Oh, I see, and so the duck was stuck to that container, looks like with some Vaseline is what it's looking like. Yep, I was wondering why it was greasy. Emma made this. <laughs> <laughs> and there it disappeared, and now instead of seeing a transmission so I can see the duck. I'm seeing just the reflection. Disappearing duck, but wait! There's we can more. make it come back if we fill the container up with water. Magically Ooh. appearing ducky! Awesome. That is an awesome, awesome thing. And then something we're going to do now. We're going to do two things. We're going to do a next section where we're looking at bending light. We're going to use lenses to bend light. But before we do that, our next episode is called Science It Up. So in our last 10 minutes, while we're still with you, I want you to put in the chat any question you've ever wondered about that we could turn into a science experiment. And we're going to use those questions that you give us as the basis for an episode. So anything you've ever wondered about, put it in the chat. We'll collect those questions together. So be thinking, as you're watching, be thinking, share your science questions with us. Now I've got this big sphere here, and it turns out this sphere is going to bend light when it goes through it, and I can make an image. And if we look right, there it is, we see like Brian's head inside the crystal ball, and that's an image of my head inside there. It's what we call a real image. And you can see it's upside down, and we made this by taking 
basically just using this thing as a lens and I can make a certain kind of image. Now if you want to do this, we got these little plastic balls at the craft store. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in front of my webcam. And then I think we're going to spotlight spotlighted. my video. So here I am on my webcam. I'm going to take my little plastic marble, put it in front of the webcam. And there's upside down Brian head <laughs> in front of Brian, which is awesome. And if I rotate the sphere, the image stays in the same place. So this is just a plastic marble. I say we got this at the craft store. And I can use that to do awesome magic with my webcam. So that's one way to make lenses, but Casey's got a whole bunch of cool lessons. What? And Maude disappeared and Casey has joined us. I kicked her out. I needed her spot. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Casey. That wasn't very nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Casey, what do you got? All right, Brian. So here I have something called a Fresnel lens. Um, this is just basically a sheet that you can use as a magnifier. Oh, it's magnifying the letters on your shirt, actually. Just oh, as is you're it? holding can you it. See? Which is kind of, uh, there it is. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. See if I can magnify my face. Awesome. <laughs> but you can also use that to make an image, right? You can, yeah. So I've just got here just a little display board and a light bulb. And if I hold it in the right spot, you can see. Can you see that? Oh my Pretty gosh, well. it's an image of the light bulb. There it is. Mm -hmm. And you can see that it's upside down, which means it is what we call a real image. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. amazing. You can see the same thing with this um con cave just lens. a little converging lens <laughs> yeah converging lens uh-huh let me see if i move it a little bit closer oh my gosh and there's the image of your light bulb right on the screen right upside down again so could i play a me movie with that lens you could you could play a movie on your screen and you could uh, on your phone screen and you could project it on oh man the, this on the screen oh which would be kind of cool that would be projector. cool. Of course, it'd be upside down, but course, that's okay. Of course, it'd be upside down, but then you stand <laughs> on your head. No problem. And then, Brenna, how about if someone doesn't have a, a glass lens? What could they do instead? Well, if you don't have a glass lens, you just need something that's going to bring the light together, which is what we call a converging lens. So here I just have this little globe vase. You can use a fishbowl. You can use a vase like this. You can use some kind of glass you have. And I turn on this light, and when I place this peep piece of paper behind it. Oh my gosh, I'm, you made an image of the light bulb. Yeah, look at that. I can right see there. the twists in the image. And you projected an image of the light bulb using a fishbowl. I did, so, you know, if you don't have a lens, you can play a movie with a fishbowl. There you go, <laughs> <laughs> kind of awesome. Which is, which is kind of awesome. <laughs> But here's the thing, people do have lenses. You have two lenses inside your eyes, and Casey is gonna show us a little demonstration of how your eyes work to make images. Yeah, so here I have um, just a little flask that we've taped um, another lens on the front of to imitate how your eye works. So I got a lens in the front, and then I got a round fluid-filled ball is what it looks like. That's yes. what my eye is. Right, in the simplest form, your eye is a fluid filled ball. So what your eye does for you is it takes all the light that comes in and it Oh my gosh. Well, Look at those takes rays it of from light. that cone oh and gosh. focuses it right on the back of your eye. And you can see the focus. Those rays of light are being brought together and that's what makes the image on the back of my eye. Right, correct. Oh my gosh. That yeah. is awesome. So that is happening right now inside my head. It is, it is. And here you can see we have another little eye. Um, and if I put it in front of this, you should be able to see, let me know if it's not working. Um, oh, I think I can see that light bulb upside down. Oh my gosh, there it is. There it is. There it is. So yeah, and in your eye, it takes all of that light and focuses it on the back of your eye called the retina. And everything that you're seeing is actually upside down. Your brain just turns it the right way up for you. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. That is amazing. But if it's too close, I can't quite focus on it. Is that right? Like it's, if I take that thing and make it too close? Yes. If this is... Too close, too close. <laughs> can't focus. Oh, A little blurry? <laughs> a little blurry. But then if I bring in the lens... Let's see if we can get another lens. Oh, we there. crisp it up. This is, if you ever see your mom and dad holding, the, holding that newspaper arm's length away, it's because their um, focus point 
is further away. So this is the same way that this lens works, is just it's allowing a, you to have it closer. It's allowing you to get it closer. And that's, that's basically what a magnifier does. That makes a type of image that we, call, that we call a virtual image. You're looking through the lens, but allows you to get closer to things. And we have a video that shows a cool way to do this. Now this is one you want to ask the responsible adults in your house, can you do this with your phone? But check out what Emma has done. She put her eye next to her phone, it's too close to focus on. Then she made a lens for it with a droplet of water. And then she could focus really, really close on her wow, eye. Extreme, wow. cl ah! <laughs> Extreme close up. Extreme close up. And so basically made a lens with water, just as Brenna made a lens with water. That, that is kind of awesome, but use that to make an extreme close-up image. That is fantastic. And I'm going to look at some of the questions. People are putting things in here. How do you make things disappear and appear? How is paper so thin? What happens when you put things in liquid nitrogen? Make music out of scraps. How do TVs work? How fast is the speed of light? How do plants make air? How, do you, how can you see clouds when they are air? How do fish sleep? Why is oil less dense than water? How do you fly? Is the sun so cold it is hot? How to make people fly? Oh my gosh. These are all great questions. These are awesome mm -hmm. questions. I think we've got a basis for a new show. So we've got a couple more minutes. Keep throwing those questions in the chat and we are going to include those. And then two, I'm going to remind teachers um, in, in any school district anywhere, we're looking for teachers to partner with. So if you have a topic you'd like to see us treat on an episode, let us know what it is and we'll see if we can build an episode around it. And the best would be if we can figure out a way when we can work with your kids and get your kids on the show. That would be like the bestest ever. But I've got a, a, a last demonstration that we can do. And I'm, I put on my awesome little apron here, which I hope everybody appreciates my, the awesomeness of my apron. And I've got this piece of plastic right here. And this piece of plastic has lenses in it, but they're not round lenses. They're, they're like lines. It's like little cylinders instead of being spheres. So it lenses things in a very particular way. And if I take this and put it in front of my, my uh, apron here, you can see it looks like the lines are only going vertically. But if I take it and I rotate it horizontally, now it looks like the lines are just going horizontally. And so I can take that image, which is actually checks, and I can emphasize the horizontal lines, but we don't want to do that. I need to do the vertical lines, which are much more slimming. There we go. That's, what I, that's the effect I'm looking for right there. And this is a piece of lenticular plastic, and we just got this on the internet and this is kind of an awesome thing and you can use it to make those cool cards if you've ever seen where you take the cards and you tip them and you get different images this Ooh. is the plastic that they use to make it but you can buy sheets of it and you can use that to do some awesome images three last things we want to do first off i want to encourage people to throw their questions in the chat and we're getting some awesome awesome questions going in why do snowflakes have different designs Ooh. Oh. How does your brain move your legs? Oh my we goodness. We need Maude back here so she can tell That's us. That's right, because Maude's a neuroscience <laughs> yes. person. Yes. And one thing to know, all the people who are part of Little Shop of Physics, we are scientists and science students. So Casey, what's your major? I study biology. So Casey studies biology. What is biology? What is it about? Um, just about the life around us, everything, the hidden life. In the wow. chemistry. And so Casey's studying just like <laughs> just just life, like yeah. everything that's alive, which is kind of awesome. And over to Brenna. What Brenna? What are you studying? I am also studying biology, but I would like to be a science teacher. So I am learning how to be a science teacher. So we have specialists in science who also have an interest in education. Of course, my background is physics, and these days my specialty is sharing physics with people. So we've got the living world covered. We got the things which are not living coverage, which is the thing that physicists do. And then Maude is a neuroscience major. So she's all about how does your brain move your legs? That sounds like a Maude question. And we have a whole bunch of questions that have come in. We got enough to make a show out of. We're going to take these. We're going to filter through them and see how can we take those questions and turn it into a scientific question that we can answer by doing some investigations on the show. And it's a little episode we call Science It Up. And before before we go, I want to say thanks to, as always, behind the scenes. We've got Patrick back there running the camera. And we've got Adam running the tech. 
The Little Shop of Physics is a big, big team of creative and awesome folks, and it is a joy to join you every Friday. And I say, we're going to see you back here next Friday. We're going to science it up. Talk to you all then.